Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Rugus, chill out. I am about to embark on a seven night wilderness adventure, and I am going to be showing you everything that I am bringing on my adventure. I've been asked to make one of these type of videos before, um, showing my whole loadout and everything I'm bringing, and some reasonings for it, all my gear. So here it is. First thing I want to say is this is going to be a very fast paced video. I'm going to cover a lot of stuff very quick, drank a lot of coffee this morning. And the reason being is that I am currently five and a half hours behind schedule to leave for the seven night wilderness trip tonight. So there is a 100.2% chance that I will be arriving to camp in the dark tonight because I got like an eight hour drive. So besides that, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to go over stuff quick. Okay. The other thing is I am not an ultralight backpacker at all. I bring a lot of crap. I bring enough stuff on a seven night trip for about 10 people for a whole month. I'll bring a lot of stuff. And I got this, I got this little poof ball here. This little stink is gonna be accompanying me, so he needs some extra stuff too. So he he has a lot of weight. He's freshly brushed and groomed and he doesn't look like it, but he's ready for adventure. So I'm gonna be showing you all my stuff and then I will be showing you me packing it into my bag and how it all fits. So one thing, another quick thing I wanna say is everything you see listed here, Pretty much everything is listed in the description of the video. Um, I, I send links to all my gear, pretty much in all my videos. There's links that you can you can go to my Amazon store. It's Amazon.com/shop/MatthewPosa, and there's just pictures of all my stuff. And uh, you can click on links; it'll bring you right to the object. And if you do use those links down in the description of the video or on my Amazon store, I get a small commission, and it's no charge to you. So that's a nice way to support the channel. I, there's a lot of people that shop on, shop on Amazon. So everything's there, everything's listed. Let's go. The first thing we've got is rain gear. I've got rain gear. I've got a uh, Patagonia pants from like five years ago. It's just a shell. And I've got a Mountain Hardware uh, rain top. I got both these on discount on some discount website. Sleeping pads. I've got a Thermarest Neo Air Trekker was sent to me by a subscriber and a Thermarest uh, it's the warmer version, even though I don't really need it this time of year. Another quick note is this is a spring trip and it's kind of on the, the warmer, it's going to be warmer side. So I'm going to, I, I have packing in accordance to that. I always pack for colder weather and stuff, but you know, you gotta, I'm not bringing Monty's sleeping bag basically is what I'm saying because it's going to be a lot warmer at night. Okay. I've got two Nemo fillows, one for my head. These are pillows um, and one's for my knee. I need a knee pillow. Like I said, I'm not an ultralight backpacker. I have got an Alps Mountaineering footprint for my tent. I've got a Helinox uh, lightweight weight chair with a little foot brace. This was also sent to me by a subscriber. That's for the rest of my back. I've got an AquaQuest tarp. I think it's a 12 by 10. This is a new one I just got. Haven't used it yet, but the 10 by 10 was just a little too small, so this is a 12 by 10. In here, I have a 20 degree Grand Teton sleeping bag. It's pretty much my summer bag and two um, x Light thermal reactors C to Summit sleeping bag liners. And this is in a stuff sack. This is the Event Waterproof C to Summit stuff sacks. So I use, I, I normally just use um, these ones over here, these Alp stuff sacks, but these ones are waterproof so I'm going to start to use these more. I've had these for a while, I just never really used them, but Keeps my sleeping bag dry just in case anything crazy happens. My boat gets filled with water and you know my drive pack, which is back there, gets water in it. This will probably stay dry because yeah, it usually does. So in here, in this stuff sack, I've got my tent, uh, just just the netting, just the, the frame of the tent, just like the, the screen and stuff. Then in this one here, I have got my rain fly, the poles, and the stakes. And this is a Eureka Midori 3. It's got double vegetables, double doors, and it's good enough for my tall body. I'm bringing uh, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, just because there's gonna be bugs at night. There's probably gonna be mosquitoes, so I wanna just have something that's drapey. You know, it's not gonna be crazy cold at night, maybe 50s, maybe dips into the 40s. And uh, yeah, I just wanna have something comfortable. And then I've got my ratty old, uh, flannel liner. This thing's really warm. The zipper doesn't work. It's got holes in the elbows. It's too short on my torso and my arms. This thing needs to be burned, but for some reason I love it and I can't 
throw it away and part with it because there's no replacement. But this is actually part of a uh, three layer Columbia jacket I got on clearance years ago and just, I just, I love this dirty, stinky, falling apart thing. So that's my two long sleeves for warmth. And I know I'm rapid firing, just bear with me. You're just gonna have to rewatch this video multiple times. Like I said, drinking lots of coffee. I, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going out the door and driving eight hours. Like, after I'm done packing, I'm leaving. So in here, I've got another uh, stuff sack. This has got all my clothes, waterproof stuff sack. This has one pair of pants. Now this is, okay, real quick, this is what I'm wearing out. Um, I'm gonna wear my Crocs for the drive and then I'm gonna to switch to my muck boots over here when I'm paddling and porridging and stuff, and I'm gonna bring my Crocs with uh, for at camp. These are a nice camp shoe to dry your feet out when they get all soggy. So, I've got, I'm gonna wear these zip-off pants, which are double as shorts, then I've got some Carhartt pants, some long pants just to prevent bug bites and stuff when you're at camp. I've got two pairs of quick dry underwear, two shirts, t-shirts, um, two, bottoms and tops of smart wool thermal layers, four pairs of socks, a pair of wool gloves, and I have a hat as well right here, but since I'm gonna be arriving in the dark, I'm not gonna keep this in here, I'm gonna keep it on top because I'm gonna need it. It's gonna probably be chilly tonight. So that's what I got for clothes in here. And I also keep a pair of socks in my sleeping bag so that at night when my feet are soggy, I switch to those socks. Those are socks that stay dry used for sleeping. On the topic of clothing, I have got a pair of these Seal Skins uh, waterproof socks that are super high and they're all one so there's no, it doesn't rub on your ankle at all. These are awesome. I just started using them these this winter because my feet used to get really soggy and sweaty and I used them last fall and, um, okay Rugus, calm down. Um, I went on a recent canoe trip and I filled my boot with water, filled it with water, and I was just sloshing around and I, when I went to take off my foot, or when I took off my boots at the end of the day and put on my Crocs and took the, these off, my foot was bone dry. So these things are awesome. One thing I will mention is these, um, when you're walking around in muck boots like I do in winter, you rip apart the back here. So they don't last, they, they don't last a year, definitely. So but they keep your feet dry which is huge and important to me i'm there's gonna we're gonna be in the 70s fahrenheit during this trip so i'm gonna see how they do in, in the heat it's gonna be pretty warm i don't know if i'll like them but we'll see it's it's a toss-up of like really warm sweaty feet that and it just like pulls the moisture out or soggy falling apart feet next we've got three microfiber towels these are like rei full-size towels I have to bring three. I would bring just one for me, but two are for Monty. He's going to probably go swimming because he's a stinky wet dog, likes to swim, gets hot. He needs to be dried and brushed or he starts to smell like a stinky foot. So, um, yeah, two are for him, one is for me. He's going to get the green ones, I'll get the gray. Okay, next we've got, I've got a little bag that's pretty much like my... I would say survival kit. I keep this with me at all times. In this bag, I have got I've got 150 feet of paracord. There's three of these. I've got a headlamp. I've got a foldable saw. I've got a bushcraft knife. This is the Mora knife, and my saw is the my saw is the uh, it's a silky Super XL 21 professional thing with tip snapped off because yeah I've snapped it before. Uh, my, my headlamps are the black or the black diamond storms because they're waterproof. Sorry. Sorry I'm getting a little carried away. I've just got a compass in there. I keep a lighter wrapped in duct tape in there. And uh, I've got a little mirror reflection. Waterproof matches in there. What else do we got in here? Oh I've got a Fire steel, I'm using one that was sent to me by a subscriber recently. They're all, any fire steel will do. And then I've got a little uh, bench made foldable knife. Just because I like to have I like to have a little pocket knife. I use those more than a big knife. Now I'm gonna be keeping one headlamp because I'm arriving at dark tonight. Um, I keep one headlamp somewhere else in my bag normally. This always 
holds one, but I'm going to put this, I'm going to keep it out and put it somewhere else that's quick access. Because once, when you see when, we, when I pack this bag, if you can't access all the stuff on the bottom really quick without pulling everything out. So that's pretty much what goes in that bag. That's that little pack. Put that over here. Watch out, Rugus. Hi. Then I've got a Grand Forest Brooks uh, wildlife hatchet process in wood. One quick mention, another quick mention is this trip is odd. It's an odd time of year. Currently, unless I hear other news on the road, there is no campfires allowed on this trip. And it is going to be so weird and so hard to deal with not having the relaxation of a nice fire at night. But it is what it is. Rules are rules. So I'm going to decide when I get there if I want to keep this and that saw in there, which I probably will for emergency and survival purposes. If I if I need to make a fire because I'm in a dire situation, I'm hypothermic, I'm going to make fire. I don't care about no rules. I'm going to make fire. But we'll see. I can make a fire, obviously, without it. It's just nice if everything's wet to chop and process and get this dry centers. But, yep, Grand Forest Bruce Little Hatchet. Okay, next we've got water filters. I have got a MSR trail shot, and then I've got an MSR gravity filter, a four liter. This thing is awesome. I love this filter so much. It provides just water, you don't have to do any work, you just fill up your bag, you hang out, oh, you've got a full Nalgene. Drink some water, oh, you've got another full Nalgene, and then you just scoop up more. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear for this time of year, is just having fresh water available all the time. I've given water for up to six people with this thing, and it's not a problem. This thing has lasted for years. The only thing you have to change is the filter. This little thing right here. Um, I use a new one pretty much every two seasons and I only let them dry out. I never run bleach through them, anything. I've never gotten sick. My water never tastes funny. Um, I just replace these every two canoe seasons and I always bring a backup. So this is the backup and I've got the new one. I've got an actual new one in there this year. But yeah, I never had to worry about it. I've never gotten sick. Water tastes great, so but I usually filter pretty clean water, but anyways, and then the trail shot here, this is a little pocket filter. This stays in my pants pocket at all times. So this thing takes a minute to, you know, get out, set up, hang to a tree and get water. I keep this in my pocket so when I'm just cruising along in my boat, um, I can, if I need a quick drink, I just pull this out, get water instantly, good to go. Drink right from it. So that is my water filtration. Now let's go through this little pack of randomness. This is just a bunch of random stuff. I've got sleeping pad uh, repair kits. I've got the extra filter, like I said. I've got a bug net with a metal thing. This is an outdoor research. It's got a metal ring. Gonna need this, I believe. I've got my maps. I've got a whole bunch of batteries. I've got about 16 AA's and 20 AAA's. I need these for my light on my camera, headlamp, my lantern in uh, the tent. And yeah, batteries are important. This weighs a lot. I bring a lot of batteries. I pack a lot of weight. Uh, Monty's brush for when he gets wet. I bring two extra gallon freezers and like four quart bags and some rubber bands just in case I need to like keep fish or just, I, I don't ever really use these. I pretty much just transfer this from pack to pack and just, this is just in case. If you need a container for water or anything, just, I just keep it on me for these type of trips. And I've also got two garbage bags, so if everything gets soaked and I need stuff to stay super dry or I need to put wet stuff in my pack and separate it, I'll just wrap it in a garbage bag. I've got a really thick one and then a thin one. Just keep those just in case. Lens cloth, I've got, well this is just a little pamphlet for my watch because I don't know everything about it. I've got a book that I'm going to read, bushcraft book this time. I've got rain -X wipes from a GoPro. I've got my little black diamond Moji lantern. This was sent to me by a subscriber. I just hang it in my tent. That's pretty much where it goes. And I've got another lighter, uh, fillet knife sharpener, and Carmex chapstick. Now, on a trip like this, when you're getting in the sun and you got wind, chapstick is so important. I, if I didn't have chapstick, I would be so upset. It's so important when you're out there. Um, just because your lips just get dried out and then you just you would just be miserable. Need it. You need it.
Okay, so that's pretty much what's in that little bag. And these, I don't, these, this is a waterproof little storage cube. I got these years ago on Amazon. Uh, I have no idea what the name of these at all. Not a clue. Couldn't tell you. Just search vinyl pack cubes, but I pretty much put a lot of stuff in these. When they get cold, they kind of crack and rip open, but I like to keep myself waterproof. I just, I just like lots of layers of waterproofing and protection. So we'll zip this up in a minute. Right now I'm just going to keep it kind of open. That's over here. So really quickly, back on the topic of lighters, I bring four to five lighters. Um, I mostly use lighters in canoe season. I bring a fire steel and I prefer fire steel as a reliable source of making a fire. Fire steel, I would say, wins. It lasts longer, it's a little more durable, it works in the most extreme cold, we're extreme hot, and you could pull it out of the lake and get a spark and start a fire with it. Lighters are way more convenient, easy, and quick to use, but sometimes they're fussy if they get a little wet, they don't work. If they, uh, you know, if they're too cold, they don't work very well, and they could, if you smash them, you know, it could crack apart. But I always bring lighters whatever time of year just as a backup unless I forget them but canoe season I'm pretty much using the lighter I bring like four or five I only ever use one and I wrap them in duct tape so you can see I've got like four feet of paracord or four feet of uh, duct tape on each of these duct tape is super awesome to have and this one I've actually got like a marine tape for if I get any cracks in the hull of my boat it's like a aluminum foil waterproof tape so duct tape would probably work for that, but this is just a little bit better, but yeah. And with the lighters, I put them all over the place. So I've got one in my emergency bag. I'll probably put one in this pack. I'm gonna keep one in my pocket, one in my cook stove. I just store them everywhere just in case something gets too wet. Another thing that I do is just another layer of waterproofing and protection and safety. Keep them all over the place. So I'm not sure where I'll stick them yet, but I'm just gonna place them all over the place. Okay, let's keep going. Toiletry bag. This is a this little stuff sack is a Foxlight gear stuff sack. Same with this one. These were sent to me by a subscriber. Um, but in my thing, I've got two bottles of lotion, a bottle of sunscreen. I've got some wipes, a toothbrush, toothpaste, fingernail clippers, floss, and uh, Q-tips. So that's what I bring in my toiletry bag. Onward we go. We've of course got Monty's rain poncho. This is just a Walmart Junior Kids poncho and I just put it on him and cut out the front. It doesn't stay on him like if he's running like crazy it kind of slides off but when he's in the boat and he's just laying around uh, it's perfectly fine and I cut out the leg so in case we do flip and he's wearing that thing he's not going to just get tangled and just drown. What else here? Okay, first aid kit. I'm not gonna really go over too much. This is just a first aid kit with your basics, your antiseptic, you did your um, triple antibiotic, band-aids. I will mention the stuff that I bring that's a little bit abnormal that you might not think of all the time. Um, other than your basics. Let's see what I got in here. I, I bring a couple emergency blankets. I've got medical grade super glue for splits. This is something new I'm trying. I did use super glue last year, just normal super glue, but it like crusts and picks out and I can't help but pick it. This stuff is a little more thin and like pliable. It's not cheap. It's like 20 bucks for this teeny little bottle. But so far it's lasted quite a while and a few splits and we're gonna get to see how well it does because I'll get a lot of splits, I might get really dry hands. I got a little chapstick in here. I've got a blood clotting, little packets. What is that? Hemostatic agent stops bleeding fast. What else do I got? I've got little blister patches. Uh, and then this tape right here, this is like a soft, cushy, first aid, sticky, waterproof tape. I've used this before to put in between my toes when they're rubbing too much from walking around my muck boots. So this is pretty important. But other than that, I just got a bunch of like, Benadryl and heartburn medications, stomach upset, ibuprofen, all in Ziploc bags, just uh, throughout. Just a normal first aid, other than that stuff. OK, 
Okay, that's first aid, got that covered. Let's keep going. We're gonna cover the camera stuff is gonna be its own section because yeah, that's why. So I bring three Nalgene's. I always have them empty because I've got my pocket filter and I bring three because this is about what my gravity filter can fill up. So I like to just, I mean, all it takes is space. This is like no weight, so I don't mind this. And I'm doing a new thing this year um, on the canoe trip. I've got actual shaker in here. I'm gonna be bringing whey protein to drink throughout the day because I feel like I, I'm not getting enough nutrition throughout the day, so I feel like a protein boost would be good once a day. So I'm gonna try that out. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, this one's gonna be dedicated to the protein shakes because I'm just gonna try it out, see how it goes. So this attaches to this carabiner, which is like an Omega USA thing, attaches to my food bag. And yeah, I know this is a lot to take in. You're probably just like, oh my gosh, slow down, but I can't. I, <laughs> I'm i recording a video when I'm going to drive eight hours to record a week of video, so it's just like, eh. Anyways, I'm gonna keep spit firing this stuff off. So, this is probably my least favorite thing right here of this whole just trip. Since I um, can't have fires, I have to use a stove, and you can't use a twig stove. You have to use fuel stoves. So I have three canisters of fuel. This is this is so heavy, and I've got two cans of bug spray because no, normally I bring bug spray, I'll bring a can, but I expect the bugs to be really bad. Um, mosquitoes, black flies, everything nasty. So I'm just probably gonna not deal with it, spray myself up, and just do a lot of swimming. We'll see. But uh, I really hope to hear news because this is like, not only is it space, I normally bring like one can, I use one can and now I have three because, yeah, these are just some MSR containers with the quick thing, We've got some off bug spray and another one of these, but this is going to actually be a pain to fit in my food bag. Uh, one more thing I want to mention is no matter how many trips I go on, no matter how many times I do this, no matter what time of year and what extra stuff I need to bring, I always fill every scrap of space in my bag. No matter what, I don't know how I do it, but there is never extra room ever. It's always just that it barely make it. So definitely gonna be the case this year with this. But I like to keep these fuel containers inside this in case they happen to leak or something, something silly. Okay, now we've got two Little Sea to Summit foldable bowls. These are Monty's food and water dishes. Then I've got this cutting board. This is an Ikea Drala. They don't make them anymore. This is, I've got two left. This one's cracked, the other one's cracked too, but I love these. They're, it's nice and thick, so it works well. It's not too thin to where you're just gonna cut through, but they don't make them anymore, so this is, that's not gonna last forever. And then I've got my cookware. Let's just dive right into here. Okay, so we've got a spatula, a uh, light my fire titanium spork. This spatula, I'm not sure what the name is. You have to check my Amazon store to see it. And then I've got some open L fillet knives. This is the one you always see me cooking food with, but I've got another little one for filleting fish. So this is what I cut up veggies and stuff with. Then I've got my little MSR stowaway pot can't remember the size, but it's it's linked on there somewhere. And in, nestled inside here is my Trangia 28 stove, my little mini stove. This has got its own bowl, uh, the stove with the spatula here, and a little skillet. So pretty much I've got one bowl here for boiling water or something, and then I've got another pot for boiling water, spaghetti. All nestles inside there. And then I've got a little windscreen, because you need that, and I've got two pans. This is a Primus campfire pan, and this one's a MSR Alpine. The reason I use these two different is because nestles in just like that. And this nestles in here, or this, this goes here. There, so I've got two pots, three pans, a stove, a windscreen, and all my eatery and flay knives all in this little stuff sack. So it's, this is a pretty heavy little bundle here, but uh, it all stuffs, 
all fits together just perfectly. Um, this stuff sack, have no clue what it is. It's just some random stuff sack I've gotten over the years of camping. Okay, so as far as gear, other than cameras go, that's pretty much it for gear. All of this right here is going to go in my food bag. This will probably go in the food bag, food bag, and this. But all this stuff here is going to go in my bag. Oh, we'll get, oh yeah, we got we to gotta get up to there. Sorry, sorry, I'm rambling. I'm moving quick. So up here really quick, I've got my Tilly hat. I've only used it once in fall, but I'm actually planning on blocking some sun this time. I've got my life preserver. This is just randomly inserted. Um, my late was, my start was so late on the trip that the new life vest I uh, ordered came in the mail before I left, so I ended up using this on my trip. It's an NRS Chinook. Um, I got the extra large. It's pretty good. It's got a higher back, so it's definitely more comfortable and nice in the chair. Um, I can't really speak a whole lot about it. The only thing I didn't like is when in a t-shirt, this would rub on my neck pretty good, and I had a little sunburn, so yeah. Anyways, I'll have to use it more to see how I feel about it completely, but so far it's been pretty good, and it's definitely got the nice higher back so my chair doesn't get interfered with. But inside here I've got my uh, sunglasses and a little pouch. I always bring two canoe paddles, very important when you're going by yourself because when you're on a windy lake and I'm fishing and stuff, I don't tie my canoe paddle to anything. I keep this one up in the front, and I've used it before. Um, your paddle just slips away, and if it slips away and you're in the middle of a big windy lake, you will float way faster and drift away from your canoe paddle, and you'll just you'll just be stuck there. You'll have to like use your hands or just wait till you hit shore, and then you're you have no idea where your paddle is. You have to search. So I've had it happen. You just your paddle slips away. Grab my front one quick. Go grab my other one. Put it back. Good to go. Um, fishing net. Two fishing poles. I always bring two. I'll never go with one because I've had a malfunction before, and I've had friends lose them. Rods snapped, and I don't want to go on a week-long fishing trip without a fishing rod, so I always bring two. I've got a new little fishing cam camera, which is just going to be a pain to drag. Just tested it out. Uh, it's a go fish cam. I haven't had any success with it yet. Hopefully we're going to get some success on this trip. So like I said, I've got uh, a new canoe seat. I can't remember what this is. It's a GCI Outdoor. Very comfy. Little extra weight over the old Winona one I used to use but very comfy. I'm hoping this will save my back on this trip, which will be really nice. Then I've got a Z-Rest pad. This is multi-purpose. This is in the back of the boat. This is Monty's cushion for when we're going, and it also elevates him from the water that pools when he gets all wet or if it rains. And then this is a backup sleeping pad if one of ours pops or something. You know, and I also kind of let him lay on this when we're out outside the uh, tent, just outside. And then here, I've got an AquaQuest map holder. This thing is great. Nice and big so I can fold out my map. I can't remember if this is an extra large size or not, but it's worked great so far. It's kept my maps nice and dry, even though they're waterproof. Yeah, AquaQuest map holder. Thing's great. So, let's see, where are we at? Where are we at? All right, moving on. My food bag. This is a Sea to Summit waterproof 70 liter bag. This is what I put all my food in. All this stuff is gonna go in here and I attach these bottles to the outside. So that's that. My dry bag is a Mech Slog Deluxe or HD. This thing is awesome because it's got just the back support and the, the uh, shoulder things and I have had an incident where, uh, you know, filled up my boat with water and uh, I even had it stuffed and it was only folded over once and my stuff only only a little bit of water my boat filled up it was sitting submerged almost for like two three minutes maybe even five minutes and only a little bit of water got on the top just a hair so this thing works good I love this bag yeah it's a great bag I use and abuse it it's got some nicks and dings but it's I haven't poked through yet so it's really durable there's some definite scratches, definitely. But yeah, that's my bag. Um, I eventually, I think I'm gonna upgrade. This bag's nice, this Sea to Summit, but 
I don't, it's just a different material and I don't like it as much. I want to get the smaller version of this, like a 70 liter of this uh, for a food bag because I just, this is so much more durable and this has a little zipper thing that just, eh, I just, I just like this bag a lot so I'm just going to get a, you know, the smaller version of that. Probably soon here. So where are we at? We got all that covered, all that. Okay. And now, hi Rugus, got a tackle box. This has got steel leaders, jigs, swivels, uh, little grippers, extra fishing line, my tackle. Y you bring what you bring, I bring what I bring. And I, I bring a camel one because I like to set it down and then it's camouflaged so I can't see it, I forget it. I go to grab tackle like two lakes later and I realize I've forgotten it because it's a camouflaged uh, tackle box and then I have to go back and get it. Done that twice I think on extended canoe trips. Yeah, that's why I got a camel. It's a good idea to have camel. Now let's go over probably the craziest part of all, the camera and recording equipment section. So what's recording right now is a Nikon D5500 with some kind of lightweight, pretty much broken tripod. The camera is going to go in my pack in a gallon freezer and it's uh, it's gonna be wrapped in like this and it's gonna be on the top of my bag. So yeah, when I'm done here, I'm gonna have to pack that away. And the tripod just sits uh, outside my food bag here. It says it straps on the outside and I carry it around. So that gets packed in there. Uh, you can't really see that. I've also got a shotgun mic on there. It's listed down there. It's a Rode Go mic. That's what I use for recording audio. So other than that, I am using the GoPro Hero 8 with a double flex arm. I attach it all around my canoe, you know, different angles and whatnot. And uh, this is going to be my first extended canoe trip with the GoPro 8. I had a GoPro 6 that I loved, and that thing's, I kind of beat it up and it's cracked, and that's actually my backup. And then I got a GoPro 7, and I used a 400 gig SD card in it, and on my last trip this fall, in October, uh, it glitched out and I thought I lost all my footage and I don't know if it was the SD card or the camera but the car the camera was acting funny so I just I just don't trust that thing I just don't trust it and I don't trust that card so those are the cameras I use like I said GoPro 8 Nikon D5500 and then this bag right here now now what I've got here is some magic so I've got my GoPro 6 like I said backup just in case this thing malfunctions I want to keep recording this model GoPro, it's got a cracked screen, still a good camera, still works, I'll always keep it as a backup. Then I've got a little arm for my Nikon, and I put the light on here and the mic, so I bring two lights just in case one gets wet. I bring uh, a charging block for my Nikon D55 batteries and my GoPro batteries with the cords. And here's where it gets real interesting. Batteries, GoPro batteries. 15 GoPro batteries. Yes, 15. Nine uh, DSLR batteries. Seven Anchor 9700 power packs. Seven of these. These uh, record, these fill up about three GoPro batteries or two DSLR batteries. And I go through a lot of GoPro batteries. Um, so seven of these. Yeah, nine of these and 15 GoPro batteries. A lot of weight in batteries. A lot of weight. Uh, yeah, I record a lot of footage. You need a lot of batteries. Um, especially when I when you see me fishing on an extended trip or something, I like to, I pretty much record all the shots. I just turn it on, cast. Um, I don't put all of them in the video, but if I hit a fish, I like to record it. So that takes a lot of extra battery power and extra footage and extra space on cards, so yeah. On top of that, I've got my little SD card holder. What I've got in here is a 200 gig micro SD card in the camera right now. In this little micro SD card holder, I've got two more 200 gig micro SD cards. Then in my camera right there, I've got a 256 gig normal SD card and then a backup 256 gig SD card. So that is 
over 1100 gigs of recording power just in case uh, last trip was 500 gigs of footage a lot of space a lot of footage a lot of battery stuff yeah so that's the camera camera aspect of things let's finish up with food I forgot to mention my coffee mug I've got an MSR mug with a MSR mug mate for uh, this is for filtering coffee. You just put it right in your mug, put your grounds right in it. Love this thing. Easiest way to make campfire coffee. No messing around with anything, just hot water. So really quick, I want to say, you're going to notice there's a lot of fresh Ziploc baggies here. Now normally I reuse them, but I had an entire tote with a bunch of oatmeal, my granola bars, whole bunch of camping food that was just nicely tucked away. And you'll know that I recently moved to this new house. And well, I was last in there in October. And uh, well, a mice, mice decided to call it home and ripped apart all the bags, all the granola. And I just found that out today. So when I was getting my food ready um, early this morning. And uh, yeah. That was real nice. So I've got all fresh new bags. I usually reuse them and I usually, I didn't have to buy all new granola bars and stuff, but luckily I had another tote with food that was sealed. This one just had the lid cracked. So it is what it is. So that's my little thing. Then I bring two rolls, double rolls TP in baggies. I, I, I kind of go through a little more TP than the average bear. So I bring two rolls. Don't judge me. I don't want to get poop on my hands. But, you know, you always find other ways to wipe your butt. Um, then let's talk about Monty's food. He's got seven of his Oravet Denti treats with pumpkin powder, a bunch of pumpkin powder. You can get that on Amazon, organic pumpkin powder. He's got um, five quart baggies of food. Now there is a day and a half's worth of food in each one of these baggies because he gets about three cups a day. And I give him a little extra on these kind of trips. So, he'll, yeah, this, this is what he gets. That's his food. Hi, Monty. Hi. Yeah, I know you see me playing with treats. Watch out, I've got to go through this. i got to keep going. I've got my whey protein powder bagged up. I've got seven hot cocoa packs. Um, some chamomile tea in this baggie. I've got uh, two baby redskin mashed potatoes as my size for fish because I would like to get two fish dinners this trip. And then uh, I've got my homemade dehydrated spaghetti. Now I always bring seven, and they're weighed out to eight ounces. They're a little bit on the bigger side, but I always bring seven in case I don't catch any fish. But I do plan on catching fish, so uh, what I'll do is I'll usually, if I do catch a fish dinner, I'll make the next portion the next day or something, I'll have a bigger one. But I always, I always like to have a little extra food, but just enough in case I get skunked. So I've got seven days worth of eight ounce packs of my homemade dehydrated spaghetti which I will link up here, left for link. I will link up, or yeah, left for link, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't look right on my camera. Whatever, left for link, I'm gonna stick with it. I think that's what it is. Seven of, seven of those, I'll link it how to make it. And then I've got some dessert. These are some camp chow, or these are just, I got like an ice mountain house ice cream bar and like a, just a, Berry cheesecake, just two two little desserts, just in case. Get a little, a little ready for some dessert, and then I always bring candy. Gotta have my candy. I like my little sweets on top of my desserts. I got Starburst. I got some Lindor chocolates and Jolly Ranchers. I like a little little candy when I'm out in the woods on an extended trip. So dinners are all spaghetti, same thing every night. Uh, fish dinner stuff, and then for midday, I have granola bars and the whey protein. So I pack. Four granola bars a day, uh, day. I've got some like uh, chocolate ones, some straight up oats and honey, um, some nuts and fruit ones. Yeah, four a day. I usually don't eat them all. I usually eat about three, but I like to have extras just in case, you know. I've got some coffee. This is a little too much coffee, but it is what it is. And then I've got my breakfast. Now for breakfast, I normally just use oatmeal. Just instant packs of oatmeal, but I've got this like trail breakfast that I've had sitting there. It's a dehydrated meal. I'm gonna bring that, and then I've got some uh, Mountain House biscuits and gravy. 
that I couldn't say no to. You know, oatmeal every day isn't so bad, but I got some extra stuff that was it was sitting in this tote. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna eat it up. So also for our fish dinners, we have got a whole white onion. I'm gonna use half per meal. I've got three fresh lemons. I'll use two for one meal, one for the other. Of course, I've got a whole bottle of Montreal steak seasoning. I've got a Tupperware container with a stick of butter. Pretty much use half a stick per meal of the fish dinners. It's just for fish dinners. And then we've got some more snacks. I've got two things of beef jerky, two, a pound of beef jerky between the two. Share some of that with Monty. I've got habanero BBQ almonds. And of course, some Cracker Barrel cheese. So, that's all my stuff. The only other thing that's not here is my canoe, my Winona Wilderness solo canoe. It's the only thing you don't see here that I'm bringing. So now, what you're gonna watch me do, in a fast forward sense, is pack this all into these bags. Um, maybe I'll talk a little, maybe I'll just show you, maybe I'll give you a little tips and tricks of how I pack it all, but let's watch this magic happen. Yeah. I'll talk about what I keep out and stuff. I always pack this, I start the same way every time I pack. I take my sleeping bag and my clothes bag. Those go on the bottom, right against the back. And then I take my tent in the stuff sack, get that in there, and then my rain fly. And that goes in the bottom. That fills out the bottom. Okay, then I always take my two, so now we've got four cylinder, you know, stuff sacks, so I've got little cracks in between. I fill those next. So, I take my two pillows, these fit right in the center back in between. I'm going to take, now it's going to be tough to fit, fit this hoodie, I normally don't bring both, I bring a thicker jacket, but we're going to see what we can do. Now I'm going to take this, my little ratty thing, and I'm going to stuff it down in this little crack here, because you've got space, and you need to fill out all that space in these dry bags. You get pretty good at it, and you keep doing this every time you go. And then I'm going to take some towels and fill in the other side, over here. I'm always going to keep one towel up top for if I need to use it quick. Ah, stuff another towel back here. Okay, now that the bottom is nice and solid, that's pretty much the toughest part. Toughest part to fill. So now I'm going to take my sleeping pads, I stand these all up, my chair, okay, my axe I just kind of put right in the middle of those stuff sacks from the bottom, and then this little baggie slips in here, oh Monty, <clears throat> then you just kind of start wedging stuff in. Now, I always keep my GoPro batteries on top, first aid kit, water filter, toiletry, and rain gear, and a sweatshirt, all near the top. Stuff that you'd need quick if you if you're really, you know, you'd want it. So, I'm going to cookware. Still just going to fill in gaps here, because everything you put in, you create gaps. you got to make sure you utilize all that space. A lighter here. Okay, so now I'm going to put this little emergency pack here. A little toiletry bag. Get my first aid kit. What the heck? This is by far the most efficiently I've ever packed this bag. What the heck? Why do I have so much space? What am I missing? 
There's no way. Huh. <laughs> Guess I'm trying to look cool for the camera, but I, I mean, look at how much space I've got in there. All that stuff's in there right now. Can you even see in there? Barely. We're just gonna hold it up. Look at how much space I've got in there. That's a lot of space. It's even kind of jumbled around a little bit. And that's that's the majority of my gear. Maybe we'll go over the weights at the end. So, then we've got this thing. That's monstrosity. Rain gear, water filter, and easily will fit this hoodie with that camera. And I'll just, I mean, I'll better stuff this, but I mean, that's everything besides that camera. And I can roll it up a bunch. I can roll it down pretty good. That is stuffed very efficiently. I might even put some of this stuff in here if I have to. We'll see. But anyways, the last thing goes in here is the camera, so we'll do that at the end. Always start with the cutting board, and most of Monty's food goes on the bottom. Because that stuff is heavy. Monty's food is so heavy compared to mine. Old turd. Oh, I actually know. I've changed my mind. We're putting this dual monstrosity in the bottom. Oh, jeez. This is not going to be a fun food bag. This is going to weigh just as much as my pack here. So we'll stuff around Monty's dog food, except for one of them we'll keep near the top. And let's see. Desserts and fish dinners goes near the bottom because we don't need that right away. Hot chocolate can get stuff down there. Keep my spaghetti up here. I'll keep my protein powder and a few granola bars in this front zipper right here. Just for quick access so I don't need to mess around. Ooh, this is gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a tight fit. It always is. And I always make it work, even if it's like a 10 day trip or a two week trip. Let's make it work and just pack, pack things better. I'll put some stuff in there. Not really food, just. So I got my coffee mug in here. Put Monty's food near the top. Butter this. And then I put in Monty's rain poncho in the top of this. And my GoPro chest harness and head harness. I keep in here. Oh! I almost forgot the Monty dog harness. I don't even know where that is. I need to take a quick pause. Oh, oh, jeez. Hold on. Got it. Okay. Yeah, like I said, this one we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep the chest and that harness in this pack. Dog harness for quick access. Now this pack. I always do this. It's a food bag. It, uh, it gets smaller as you go on. Every day. First day is the worst. So you just, you just stuff it, you get it, you make it fit. Barely. There we go. Let's fit this stuff up here. One of these quick access bowls. Okay, this one is packed much less efficiently than the other bag. Ooh, that's a heavy bag. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I take the TP, keep this quick access on the outside until it can fit in the bag. But that's why it's definitely in Ziploc bags, because it won't get wet. These are sealed up. And I put it in my pack when there's... I'll probably keep one in here just because there's so much extra room. Just to be safe. And then I just clip these on right here. I'll put my Crocs. I'll clip them on here. Uh, I'm going to go in when I'm portaging. And uh, that is that. This stuff goes in my boat. All this clips on. 
we just gotta pack away that DSLR, put the uh, tripod on here, and that's that, that's a wrap. That is all that stuff you saw piled out, all that junk, right here in, the, in, in those two bags. It's amazing what you can fit in there. So the last step I will do is throw my packs and we'll get a quick weight just to see where we're at. I've never actually weighed them, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious. Let's see, we'll do it right here. Oops. Okay, so food bag. Oh, we gotta weigh, I gotta weigh myself first. How do you... Does this thing work? There it goes. 216. I'm gonna put on a pound. I thought I weighed 215. Oh, what? I'm not gonna fully put this thing on. Let's see what our food bag weighs. I don't have one of those little nifty bag weight thingies, so we're just gonna do some math. Oh, that's not too bad. 256, so this is only 40 pounds. It's not as bad as I thought. 40 pound, 40 pounds of food for a week. <laughs> Okay, and then this bag, minus the camera, what's this one weigh? I don't think it weighs too much more. Oh, no, a little bit more. It weighs, it weighs a fair bit. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh geez. This one weighs 68 pounds. 68 pounds is this pack, not including the camera. So, 40 pound food bag, 68 pound gear bag, everything's packed away. I am ready to go get, I'm ready to go drive for eight hours, paddle in the dark, and set up camp in the dark, and maybe fight for a campsite, and probably not fish, and have a grand old time. So anyways, that's a wrap. That's my first time doing one of these little videos. I hope you could keep up with my quick chatter and my coffee rambling, but I gotta get the heck out of here and go on an adventure. So I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Oh, Rose,